Hi, this is Julian for Production Expert with um, an investigation into the Abbey Road reverb trick. If you haven't heard of this before, the Abbey Road reverb trick involves putting some filters in the way of a reverb send to keep offending frequencies out of that reverb for beneficial effect. And it does sound good. The thing that I'm investigating here is that one thing, if you look this up online, and you will find this online, lots of people talk about this trick, is that they all insist that these filters need to be placed before the reverb. And that doesn't really appear to be the case. There are some caveats around that, but let's test it and you'll see what I mean. So this is a typical EQ shape that we hear discussed. It's a high, high pass filter. Um, uh, typical frequencies are 400 to 600 hertz. Um, a, a low pass filter uh, rolling off the highs from about 10K. There is... In some iterations, there's a there's a, a mid-range dip as well, around 2K. Specifics of that vary. The specifics, to be honest, aren't the magic about this. But neither is the placement of the filters, as we'll see. So anyway, I've set up a, a session to demonstrate this. And um, what I've got, if we look in the mix window, we can probably understand the routing a little better. I've got a bit of vocal, and that's going out to these four print tracks. That's so that I can compare the difference between these different passes uh, after the fact. But if you see, this is routed to a print bus and these four audio tracks are all receiving the print bus. It's also being sent via this send to this reverb. And on here, I've got some different reverbs I can try out. And I've got an EQ, this EQ over here. And I can place that either before, or if I pick it up and move it, after the reverb. So this is the correct way. If you look it up online, this is the orthodox approach to the Abbey Road reverb trick. Place these filters before a reverb and it'll sound good. It does sound good. I mean, I will say it does sound good. This is a good thing to do. But I still maintain that it doesn't matter in the, or make any difference at all in most cases where that filter is. So let's hear it. Um, so first off, pre-plate print. So I've got a pr plate reverb. Uh, I'll put that back onto plate because I've been experimenting. Uh, this is just deverb. But the point is, a plate reverb is a straight ahead reverb and it doesn't feature any modulation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to print the results of this with the EQ pre the plate. It sounds like this. You hurt me to the point I know it's done. Great. Now I'll move it to post reverb. I'll mute this because otherwise we'll get into all sorts of trouble and I'll record onto this one. So post plate print. You hurt me to the point I know it's on. Okay, well, that sounded the same to me, but there's a way we can prove it just because I've got these trim plugins in. This one is just there just to, you know, really visually guarantee there's no latency stuff or time of arrival stuff happening here. But this one is polarity inverted. So if I unmute this one, we listen to both of them together. If they're the same as each other, we'll hear nothing. And there it is. We hear nothing. So these null, these are the same. It doesn't make any difference whether this is pre or post. I'll move it back to pre. And what I'll do now is I'll go on to a different reverb algorithm. I'll go on to the hall reverb, and you'll, even, you'll probably even just be able to hear it straight away that this has quite a heavy modulation on it, so the pitch goes up and down. You hurt me to the point I know it's on. A little kind of, little kind of waver there at the end you could hear in the reverb tail. It's, it's got some modulation on it, so. You hurt me. To the point I know it's on. And then I'll do the same thing again. I'll move them. We'll dump this. We don't want to hear this because it'll null if it's nulling properly. And uh, we don't need that, actually. And here we are. You hurt me. To the point I know it's on. So what happens if we listen to these two together? This has got the same arrangement of trim plugins. So these should null. This is modulated. So if that modulation doesn't line up between those two versions, well, maybe it'll sound different. I don't know. Yeah, that doesn't null. So there we are. On reverbs that don't use modulation, then 
the placement of the filters in the Abbey Road reverb trick make no difference whatsoever. And considering the historical context, I think that's pretty significant. We can try these again uh, with using something else because you might think it's just something peculiar to D-verb. I was just using D-verb because everybody's got it. But if we make that inactive, we'll bring up 7th Heaven. 7th Heaven sounds awesome. But here I'm using Halls 2. This has got modulation on it. So we'll even do it in the, in the right place. We'll do it on Halls and uh, our EQ is in the wrong place. And if I do this again and print. You hurt me. To the point I know it's on. And repeat. Mute this one and record onto this one. You hurt me. To the point I know it's on. And if we compare these, we should expect to hear the same thing. We should hear something here because this is a modulated reverb. And we do. Okay, last one that I want to try is uh, something that has no modulation. So in that case, we'll lose this and we'll try this one instead. This is Avid Space, but the point is this is Convolution and Convolution reverbs don't do modulation. So we'll just try that again. I'll move that back into the same place and we'll, uh, we'll go on to this same one again. You hurt me To the point I know it's on And we'll go again with the filters in the correct place. You hurt me to the point I know it's on. And just one last time, let's see if that nulls. Nulls perfectly. So it makes no difference with an unmodulated reverb whether the filters are pre or post reverb when using the Abbey Road reverb trick. <laughs>